episodes 127. We're going to be talking, up as we do every week, we're going to look at the Premier League fixtures, if they actually happen. We're going to be talking about the coronavirus and its impact on football, because it's... And society as all, but predominantly football. Predominantly football. It is decimating fixtures across the board. It's time we spoke about it. Nations League. Is, yes. It's coming back and there's some damn good fixtures. I, I need a refresh on that. It's the best international competition in the world. We're then going to have a look at football celebrations. That's about it, yeah. really. Should we... Yeah, crack on. Yeah, Corona. Anja? No. Good. <laughs> Corona? Yeah. First section this week. We're going to look at the Premier League fixtures this weekend. Fixtures. How many are going to be played? Oh. Really? Well, they, there's, no, there's no certainty at the minute. Potential season. complete shutdown of everything. Yeah, a lot. But, but again, we're just going to keep it jolly. We're just going to pretend we that, the fixture, we're going to pretend the fixtures are going ahead. Yeah. So go ahead. The Tell next, the next fixture one. I want to talk about is Spurs versus Man United. First time Jose has failed to win his six games uh, during his time as a manager. This could be a good spike match, though. This is what I'm thinking. It could be. You could, could have that. Fest. And Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has somehow got Manchester United performing. as they, They're one of the form teams in the league. Let's stop mm-hmm. right now then. And we'll move on to the next issue. Andrew? No. Good. Corona. Next corona. section, Corona. Well, Lots Ramos. of things are going to get cancelled. It's very serious. It is very serious. It is very serious. I mean, we've already seen Arsenal versus Man City postponed. It's, it's very weird to it's, see a high-octane uh, like Champions League game played with no one in the stands. With no noise. With um, nothing. Just the, it's a very, a very... dystopian future we've got. It's a very weird. We've spoken about this as well. Before. Yeah, well, it doesn't benefit it's the clubs happening. in any way, shape or form. The revenue that they get from... Uh, match day traffic is lost because no one's there. No one's even, you know, no one's buying the drinks. No one's buying the food. No one's buying the replica shirts in the club shop um, because there's no one there. So what are the other implications of this? Um, I mean, if we go, if we move forward, there is a genuine concern right now in football uh, in Italy that Syria may be cancelled. This is something that has been discussed. Um, we don't know whether or not it would be a case of, right, we're going to end the league and where you all stand is where you all stand. They've also discussed doing a playoff situation. There's a very, very genuine threat here that we could see leagues around the world ended now. We could see Euro 2020 uh, rearranged. We could, we could see a delay in the start of next season. You just don't know. Never in our lifetimes have we ever seen anything like this, and the world is slowly realizing it's not going to go away overnight. It's something you have to you have to take into consideration. Look, it's genuinely terrifying. And appreciate your health. I think off the back of this, we can all appreciate our health a little bit more. Well, yeah, we should do. I'm looking for it's, a bright side. I'm struggling. It is a little bit. It's all a bit 1984 right now in the world. It's it's that that thing of. It almost feels like this is a futuristic novel that we have somehow. Yeah, we're in a football uh, dystopian land. What a weird, what a mm. weird reality this. Surely you'd stop Paul Rice over pasta. Um, just a thought. Just a thought. If I was going to stockpile, you don't need to stockpile rice as much as you do pasta because of quantity. A rice packet lasts forever. That's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. So it's not necessarily you don't need for every. Come on, like you're arguing with me. Then. No, I just think you for just every. Confirm my say, point. Whenever. For every 50 pack, pouches of pasta you need to stop by, you only need like two, right? Is that the message of the evening? But now, Obviously dry. But Don't now we're going to lamp it. That is funny. However, this is very serious. It is very serious. It is very serious. Don't forget Especially that. Especially because the implication... Old. Well, look, the implication here, of all, all of these people meeting and cross-contaminating all at once for any sporting occasion yeah. is something to consider. So... Who knows what it's going to do? I mean, we'll find out. I haven't. Shook, I think I'm mass postponement. Hand. Should I tell you my favourite precaution? Wrong? Yeah. All right. <laughs> maintain <laughs> social. Ma- maintain social distance. That's my favourite take home um, from the World Health it's Organization. Meter, isn't, it? isn't it a metre apart? You've got to stand. But generally, like any any social distancing. You, um, 
if wash your hands wash wash your hands a touch line rant intro you have to maintain that a touch line rant intro uh, our intro music is 39 is 29 seconds that's sorry. your idea is it so when you're washing your hands just play our intro music in your head and keep washing them until you finish singing so with al lewis that one just or um or gag and press our, our house band they sang the original yeah so gag and press our house band sang the original and yeah. that was 29 seconds just wash your hands. Other things, I know they say 20, but I think the 9 is a bonus. Practice respiratory hygiene. Mm. While well. I'm washing my hands? No, no, separate, separate, okay. separate, separate. The other things you what, can do. What are the stay I stay to... informed. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's. Uh, I think a, I think that's that's all bases that, covered. But any more any more advice? Go to the World World Health Organization website. Or another good one for information, Twitter. Should Wait, we, yeah, that, that covers. That was the least football section of our podcast we've ever done. Like who? Know, like yeah, okay. Games are off. Done. Games are basically off for months. That's, that's gonna happen. Andrew. We're going to look ahead to the Nations League. The Nations League. The Nations League. Because the Nations League um, last year was the surprise package for me of football. If it goes on. If it goes on, yeah. When is it set to start? Oh, later in the year. September, I believe. September. What I loved about it last season was that it showed that when you when a team who's 30th plays the team that's like 31st in the Coefficiency League, um, they're actually very competitive games. Whereas when a team that are ranked, say, 30th in the world play a team that are ranked first in the world, usually they get a hiding and it doesn't prove anything. So when teams play each other and it's more equal of a competition, they produce more exciting fixtures. Do you fixtures. know how I see the Nations League? Go on. It reminds me a lot of the startup screen to the Super Nintendo game Striker. Okay, where so you then. can just choose, pick and choose your teams and you get like similar team selections. Like if you click the random, for example, and you brought up Fair Islands yeah. with this Malta. Okay, yeah. That's like it's, the... it's that amount of like randomness which is thrown into the footballing world. It gives them an incentive because you can earn uh, qualification for the next Euros and you can earn um, a playoff spot. Finland and Wales. So you've got someone like Scotland who is in the playoffs Black for Euro Andorra. 2020. These are great fixtures. You've got a team like Scotland who got in the quali- uh, the playoffs for the Euros off the back of their Nations League campaign. It's brilliant. Moldova, Kosovo. These, that's another good fixture. Can yeah. I t- can I write? Shall I run you through a few Belarus, of my favourite groups? Belarus, Albania. I mean, we can all, this is... Yes, please run, run me through. So you've got Bosnia, Italy, yeah. Netherlands and Poland, which is a really super competitive group. Lithuania, uh, Kazakhstan. Another good fixture. Uh, Belgium, Denmark, England, Iceland. You know, that's this mm. is what the, the Nations League does, is it's elevated Iceland. Gibraltar versus San Marino. I mean, this is ridiculous. Group three is Croatia, France, Portugal, and Sweden. Mm-hmm. That's a really good. Oh, Sweden, France. This is what I mean. Right. Is there any particular... Are there any As- particular Azerbaijan, reason? Luxembourg. Estonia, Georgia. So, and none of these, Look, none of these games are take, tickling in your pickle right now. These, uh, my pickle is tick- Netherlands. It is tickled because it reminds me so much of Striker. Germany, Spain, Switzerland, and Ukraine. Cyprus, Montenegro. Austria, Northern Ireland, Norway, Romania. Uh, the Wales group is. Uh, Bulgaria, Finland, and Republic of Ireland. Look how far Wales have come. Look at us now. Yeah. Look at us now. It's, yeah, Kiefer Moore, you know. Big Kiefer, Big Kiefer Moore. Wales have come a long way since the, you know, this is a good, really good group. And Influential. I think Wales, Wales could Influ- easily win this. Influential. If it all goes ahead, like we're, we're pre-planning here, but it's not going to go ahead because we're going to be in a dystopian lockdown, which is caused from the coronavirus. That's what. That's exactly what I'll be. What it'll be. Well, the Nations League. Nations League. Don't worry about it. It's probably going to be cancelled, like everything else. Oh no! Right. Everything's okay. cancelled. Right. Okay. Well, twenty twenty is cancelled. There we go. Should we end it. on that? We're going to end this section. End this. End this. End this section. This section. Andrew.
We are going to look at football celebrations. Celebrations. We're going to look what at them. What split in, this decision? We're going to look at them in detail because of, um, well, Mr. Patterson, Callum Patterson at Cardiff City, he, he celebrated by... Friend of the Touchline Month. Yeah, friend of the Touchline Month. By mocking. It wasn't mocking. It was showing his, his capabilities. It was, yeah, the it was, I thought it was a very jokey, mocky way of celebrating. It was a fantastic team to win. Forks is celebration. It was very good. Splendid. Lovely business. It was. Lovely. But the celebrations in particular have got, brought us into discussing our favourite celebrations and what, iconic... What are your, what are your favourite celebrations? Yeah, iconic in history. So the Espria. The Klinsman. The Alan Shearer. The Ravenelli. The shirt over the head is yeah. iconic. Tell me this. Ask me. Riddle me this. Riddle me this. Why the hell do players take their shirts off? Yeah, I don't get that. What, what is that? You Why do, are they so smooth? Damn. Knee slides, are, I think... Do you I got a theory. at your I age? Got, I got theory, theory about knee slides. Go on then. I think that where the genesis of knee slides has come from, you know when you're, you're a kid, you're in school, right? Yeah. And you walk across a hall which has just been polished. Yeah. Yeah? You it's do imp- want it's, in, it's impossible. I think I'd still do that today. I would if still. If I was walking around in a nice, flo- like, polished floor... I think I'd knee slide. Yeah. I think the topless thing yeah. is is I don't know topless. what topless, oh, yeah. topless topless smooth players. I've never got so excited. I thought I'm gonna rip my shirt off and I'm gonna windmill about. it above my head. If you got yellow carded, that would not be rescinded. Yeah. So if you got if you rip your shirt off and you got yellow carded, and then VAR said no goal, no goal. your yellow card still counts. Yeah. So you've got to be careful. Uh, there's one recently, a mocking one from yeah. uh, Neymar. Um, yeah. And they did. He did the the Harland Zen pose, the Zen pose, uh, in in a mocking tribute. To it's say. very on brand for Neymar to do that. It is very much so, and it brings me mm-hmm. on perfectly to okay. my other point about celebrations. Yeah, you can learn a lot from players how they celebrate. Example: Yeah, Ronaldo, all on his own, Rocket Man yeah, pose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Messi celebrates with all of his team. With his team, yeah. That's yeah, the difference, that's right? So you'll see if a player appreciates working as a team and is set up from an w- awesome assist to create the goal, you'll mm. see that, especially if it's a nice team goal. Yeah. yeah. That mentality, they're the, type of, they're the type of players I like. The leaders which pull you through, but also celebrate as a team. Corona. Hanja. Do a little outro, then I want to do like one final musing. Go on then. Okay, right. Thank, right. So first do your of all, thing first. Okay, my thing first of all. Thank you very much to Bendy Geddig Media, our producers of this show. Thank you very much. Follow us on social media at a Touchline Rant everywhere you get to your socials. So my good news is the Colo Colo players. <laughs> Walked on recently with some dogs from a shelter to adopt them from the shelter instead of mascots. I think that's a wonderful idea and I think it's something... Did any of the dogs get picked up? I think a lot of them did. This is something Cardiff City should do. I think this is a thing Cardiff City should do. And I think they should do it through the like Cardiff Dogs Home, is what I think it should be, be. Do you like that idea? Callum Patterson with a collie. Patterson, yeah, absolutely. Oh, I'd like that. What a corgi. It's old Bamba with a St. Bernard. <laughs> Cardiff Dogs Home to Tom do marvellous work. Russell. Again, fantastic. Yeah. Anything else? Love to see it. Yes, so it's just big up Cardiff Dogs Home. Really off the back of that kind of dog hotel, which they do wonderful things. Uh, I think there should be some sort of crossover with Cardiff City to make this happen. Thank you very much for listening to this week's Touch and Around podcast. Thank you very much, Ben, for getting media. Hanja.